Welcome to a new features uh, tutorial. Uh, we did a pretty major release with uh, 1.4 and over the next couple of weeks uh, we'll try to make as much video tutorials uh, as possible uh, explaining the new features. One of the first ones that we have that we added and which I'm going to do a tutorial about right now as you can read is activate in volume. Uh, I will show you what that means right now. It basically allows us to if I can get out of this browser, there we go. It basically allows us to use volumes, and you can use the uh, you know intrinsic Maya spheres, or you can use just normal meshes, cubes, characters, whatever. It doesn't really matter uh, to activate fragments. Uh, so fragments that are broken, but that are inactive, that are passive, that are not moving, you can um, activate them by. Uh, making sure that they end up inside one of these volumes and you know I will explain you of course in this tutorial uh, how to set that up uh, I'll just show you the end result which is something like this okay so what I've done here is I have these just go to a different camera I have these spheres and basically when the fragments come inside those spheres. Well, the way that it is set up right now is when the center of mass is inside these spheres, um, they will the fragments will become active. Uh, we have a future release planned where uh, that will be become a little bit more versatile. So whenever a point of a mesh comes within inside one of these spheres, that fragment, uh, the fragment in question, will become active. For now, it is just the center of mass. So if the center of mass is inside one of these spheres, then that fragment will become active. So I'll just let this play just in the viewport, and you can clearly see that when these spheres move over the fragments you see that this outer structure uh, of this building collapses okay this is very nice for creating these kind of crumbling effects uh, you know this shot in particular this is like the beginning of, of the shot and um, you know this is just one of the first layers but if I show you a little bit more frames uh, you could see that this would be like an earthquake and the building is starting to crumble uh, and then obviously more stuff can start happening, you know, pillars falling off and so on. But this is just, you know, a, a first layer of this sim. And in particular, in particular, I want to show you how to uh, set this up. So I'll just open up a scene where I haven't done anything of that sim work. And just let's go through it step by step. Uh, you know, the basic fracture stuff I will go over quickly. But I'll still show you uh, how to set these things up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two uh, structures of the roof. I'm going to break them. Um, this created these two break nodes. And just to keep things clean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty group. Uh, and just to keep my um, outliner. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, just go give that some kind of titling so we can see what's going on and move that on top of that so I can clearly see where all my fracture stuff is so now I have these two break nodes uh, that's fine uh, we'll create a simulator I will create I select these two pieces of geometry and uh, we'll select the simulator and add them there we go so now we can open up the fracture UI I'm gonna turn off um, active on these two objects, on these two meshes. And I'm just going to go rewind. And uh, while I set this up, what I like to do is I like to turn the solver off so nothing is being evaluated. Uh, so let's first, let's make these um, break patterns a little bit more interesting. So let's say that we want to make one of them a cluster with, let's say, 200 num points. And let's do like three clusters. So you can see now that we get some clustering here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you know, just want to make it a little bit more nicer or nicer than the default. And the other break geo node. Let's go Veronoi. Let's call it Poisson, and let's say 300. Okay. And if we hit the generate button, we can get some uh, more breakup in in the Veronoi pattern. So that's cool. That's all we get right now. So before we continue, I'm also going to change some solver settings. I'm going to change solver and make it go a little bit faster. 
There are other tutorials on this that explain you more in depth, and obviously, as you know, you can go to our wiki uh, to get more information about that. But let's just go to the globals. Let's set the point separation to one. That's going to speed up the things a bit. I'm going to set the num steps to two, and I'm going to change the solver to bullet. Uh, I'm also going to save this scene. You never know, it is a new build. So I'm going to call this one Whip. There we go. So, yeah, that should do it. So now, if we go, you know, if we play this now, even when we activate this, not much is going to happen. Okay? Because, you know, we don't have any events to actually break, to actually fracture this geometry. Uh, and also what I'd like to do, just to make things a little bit more clear, is I'm going to select this, I'm going to shift select everything else uh, that we're not working right now, and I'm going to put it into a layer and hide this. Okay, So that way we can just focus on what we have there. So, so let's, you know, let's uh, create some events. First thing, the uh, default one here, I'm going to delete it. Now the first thing that we need to do before we can start activating things inside the volume is we need to actually break this mesh. We need to break it. Uh, we need to create an event to break it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bomb, um, but I'm going to make some changes to it because obviously we don't really want a bomb. We don't want this uh, to explode. So I'm going to delete the, the object filter and I'm going to delete the push modifier, which is normally uh, you know the modifier that pushes the fragments away as you know as you would with an explosion. So I'm going to delete that, I'm going to rewind it, and now you will see that uh, the fracture, uh, the, the meshes are being broken. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do is I'm going to set my gravity to about 10 times as much. There we go. So that's what we have right now. Now, and this is what we're here for, now we have to activate this. Oh, one thing though, you might ask yourself, why is this not falling? Well, it's not falling because they're not active. Okay, so they're actually passive rigid bodies right now. If if I would turn this on and play, you would see that they fall down. Okay, they're they're uh, not colliding with the structure under it, but that is an easy fix. We could just select this one, connect it to the solver, and then turn it to passive. You know, turn active off, and then you will see that you know collides with that structure. There we go. So, but that is not what we want, right? We want a little bit more control over this. Now, I do realize that in Fracture there are other ways of doing what we're going to do right now. You know, you could use a uh, texture-based uh, fracturing, uh, for example. But, it, you know, this this uh, gives you, I guess it's it's a more easy way to do that for things like this. You know, when you don't read, need the control that a texture will give you or can give you, uh, we're just going to use volumes, uh, animated volumes, animated spheres in this case, to activate um, the fragments. So let's make sure that we turn them off again. This one is a collision body. Um, why don't we give this one a little bit more friction? So they slide along that surface. Um, we can, you know, maybe we can just leave that. We can change that later. Okay, so let's uh, go to the events. And this is the new one. You can go activate in volume. Okay. If we just create that event, it's basically ready to go. You can see if we have a quick look uh, at the event stack here, at the filter stack, what is happening is it's checking uh, the fracture count is one. The fracture count is indeed one because we already created we already created the fractures or the fragments in the previous event. So it's just going to act on already created fragments. Then we're going to trigger it once and this is the new one here, this is the volume filter. Okay, The volume filter, as you might have noticed here, it created this volume here which we will change in a bit, uh, within which something can happen. Now that can be a lot of things, you know, you have a lot of modifiers but in this case we're going to set uh, the assign modifier to active and one, which means that if the fragments get created in the event, we assign a modifier to uh, the fragments and that modifier will activate the fragments. So, so let's uh, let's take this um, a volume here and first of all let's just change it into a sphere and scale it down. You can use your normal Maya transfer transform scale uh, or you can use this radius here. 
they're independent of each other okay uh, we just left the radius in there because it was consistent with the other volume uh, volume tools that we already have in fracture so let's just uh, you know take this first one here and then let's animate it from top to bottom over let's say 20 frames now I'm gonna make this quite small so it just encompasses the structure that we have here so let's just start about there now one thing that I like doing like I said I like to turn this off so fracture doesn't do any calculations while we're uh, messing about with keyframes and stuff so I'm gonna set a keyframe here and then just shorten my timeline a little bit say uh, 50 frames and then on frame 20 I want this puppy to go about here under it like that so the keyframe make sure that in about the middle it it covers that something like that so let's have a look at that yes that should do it and obviously you know if this is not working this is the great thing about fracture you can it's completely procedural so you can just go back and and make some changes now we want the other one to do that as well but we want it you know we want the similar effect to happen on this I'd say some kind of beam I guess you would call it the structure here um, so uh, but we want to stagger it you know we want this one to start crumbling a little bit later than this one so the way to do that is you simply create another event exactly the same you go activate in volume and let's set this one to sphere as well and for this one we're going to do exactly the same but then I'll show you a filter that you could use so it doesn't start evaluating before the frame that you actually want it to so sorry if this is a little bit boring but I just wanted to do it step by step I didn't want to you know fly over stuff and then you wonder you know hey how did that happen so at least you know I know it's a little bit boring but at least you can see step by step what I'm doing so you can follow exactly what's going on so let's yeah 15 is good set the keyframe there go about 10 or you know let's make this one a little bit faster so at 30 it will have crumbled already so there we go so this one here so another keyframe check about in the middle move it out a bit make sure that it encompasses everything uh, yep yeah, that should do so let's just save this <coughs> okay so now one thing that we're gonna add is on the second event here uh, I'm gonna add a time filter because I only wanted to start actually evaluating uh, at frame 15 so I'm gonna add a time filter I'm just gonna say you know only start at frame 15 this is the ultimate control that fracture gives you over uh, basically everything you know and in this case over fragments so let's go back let's turn our solver on and let's see what happens now again I want to stress how fast this is this is obviously not real time but you know you get instant feedback so now you can see that things if I could just move my camera a little bit that things are starting to fall down based on where that volume goes and you can see the one here in the background is doing exactly the same thing okay so maybe this is a little bit fast you know if you would you know like a crumbling effect in a movie it would go a little bit slower uh, but that's obviously up to your artistic input um, to start creating that now that's that um, so let's uh, let's move forward a little bit this is very easy uh, as you can see here you have a couple of shapes that you can use you can use a cube you can use a cylinder and you can use a mesh now I'll do another tutorial where I explain you how to do a mesh but it's very simple you just select the option here mesh and then you s you uh, there you connect the mesh okay and it can be anything and it can be deforming which is very powerful you can have a character uh, you know uh, walking through a wall and you would activate fragments as he walks through the wall and then you would use his body as a collision object again I will make more tutorials about that uh, at a later stage now let's uh, move forward a little bit um, and you know set this up a little bit more so we get some collisions going on and then so we can cache it um, so 
one of the things that's going on here is if I bring back everything you can see that by default fracture collides oops, collides with the solver uh, floor you will see that when these fragments hit the floor um, they collide with the solver floor which is just a you know imaginary plane uh, but in this specific shot um, we have a floor here that was created by the modeler which is Jason, awesome model. We will we'll be using this model for a lot of tutorials and for some, uh, you know, more shots. And then we'll explain more about it, how it was set up uh, in other tutorials. Um, one thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to set my solver to bullet. So I'm just going to save my uh, set my solver to bullet. Another beautiful thing about Fracture, you can just change solvers in the middle of a sim. So now you will see that this will probably run a little bit faster. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you can see here is that this is colliding with this imaginary floor uh, that we have set up here, the ground plane. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this off, but obviously we want still want it to collide with this plane here. So I'm just going to take this plane, go to inputs, connect it to the solver, and set it to passive. And I'm just going to save this. Uh, yes, and that should do it really. It should collide with that now. So I do realize that it's going through the building a little bit, but I, you know, once I, I I've shown you how to set it up with the floor, it's very easy to set it up uh, with any piece of geometry. You see that it's colliding perfectly with the sol with the floor now. You can also see that it's pretty stable actually. You know, I I didn't change any solver settings or something. And there seems to be a very minimal and shimmering. Well, I didn't really see anything. And these are the lowest solver settings. Uh, maybe a little bit bouncy, but you know those are just uh, normal solver settings that you can change. And then the last step, and this is something that I will cover in the next tutorial. It's uh, you know our new, well, not very new, but there are some new features and our new takes. Uh, we have some new things in specific export to Alembic, which I will explain in another tutorial. Um, but you know the way that you would do this now if you're happy with this layer of your sim you would just uh, create a take I like to create something that I call a work take uh, I don't really do a lot of these you know uh, live sims over live sim I just create a, a work take and just bake the disk every time over the same take because then if something goes wrong your machine crashes or whatever um, you can always go back to that take uh, by just you know loading it so and you will see you know there are a couple of options you you can bake to this you can bake to keys again I will cover this as in, a, in another tutorial because this whole takes UI is is very powerful and it's it's worthy of one or two or more tutorials in its own so I'm just gonna bake to keys uh, sorry bake to disk um, which basically you know it's it, it bakes it to disk into a, a fracture a custom fracture format called FCF fracture cache file uh, and that's it and now you can just scrub in your timeline you know you can check it out you can obviously see that it's collide that it's interpenetrating with um, some of the stuff here but that is pretty easy to fix by just adding them as collision objects so that's that for you know um, activation volumes as we like to call them or activate in volume event stay tuned for more tutorial talk to you later